Today's video will be definitely a review of stuff you guys have done in the past. We're going to work on finding slopes of lines and using slopes to identify parallel and perpendicular lines. So even though this is a review, I think you want to pay close attention to what we're working on because uh, there's probably a lot of cobwebs in this topic in your minds. So we're going to work with things you need to know are rise, run, and slope. So as we've learned in the past, the slope of a line in a coordinate plane is a number that describes the steepness of a line. Any two points on a line can be used to determine slope. Okay, so slope gives us steepness. It gives us a number value to how steep a line is. So within that, um, we talk about slope as rise over run. So we need to know that rise is the difference in our y values, so this blue on the, our picture and run is the difference in our x values. So vertical change over horizontal change is what will give us the slope or the ratio of rise over run. We have this formula down here. Um, you'll see it in the classroom as well, but you need to know this. I might write it on some notes if I were you. Um, if I have two points, x1, y1, that's point 0.1, and x2, y2, that's point 0.2, um, then we can find the slope by saying difference in y's, so our second y value minus our first y value, over our x, second x value minus our first x value. So now we're just going to do some practice. Um, it says to use the slope, slope formula to determine the slope of each line. So the first one we're going to work with is a, b. So if we look in the picture and we find a, and we find b, we want to find the slope of this line here. So first we need to figure out what these two points are. So if I look at A, if I started 0, 0, I had to go negative 2 for my x, and I went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So negative 2, 7, and B will be at 3, 7. So if we substitute those in for our formula, we'd start with, um, I always start with writing the formula down when I'm not really sure how to use it yet. And then our first point will be A, our second point will be B. So I'd say 7 minus 7. So a change in Y's over 3 minus, because the formula says minus, a negative 2. So notice I have two negatives, and that's okay. What happens when we subtract a negative? We add, so 3 plus 2 gives us 5. 7 minus 7 gives us 0. And 0 divided by anything gives us 0. Now we're going to try line AC. Just by looking at the picture, I see that the line is sloping down. So I think that means I'm probably going to have a negative slope. So I want to keep that in mind. We already found A to be negative 2, 7. So now we need C, which is at 4, 2. So if we plug those into our formula, we're going to say second Y minus first Y over second X minus first x. So again we have a minus a negative which is going to change to a plus. So we're going to say 4 plus 2 gives us 6. 2 minus 7 gives us negative 5. So we have a slope of negative 5 sixths. It's okay if you have fractions. Um, a lot of times with slope you're going to have that and that's okay. So now um, let's talk about different types of slope. Remember that a fraction with the zero in the denominator is undefined because it's impossible to divide by zero. So if we had come up with a slope of two over zero, we would call that undefined because we can't have a zero on the bottom. So let's just do one more uh, example of slope and then we'll move on. Um, for line CD, we need these two points. So D is at negative 2, 1, and C is at 4, 2. I want you to see here that even though D is listed first, we can have that be our second point. It doesn't matter which point we start with as long as you always start with that point. So if we said C was our first point and D was our second point, we'd still plug into the formula to match that so we'd say y of our second point, 1, minus 2, over negative 2, minus 4. So if you had done it in a different order, we'd still end up with the same answers. So 1 minus 2 gave us negative 1, 
negative 2 minus 4 gives us negative 6. Anytime we take a negative divided by a negative, that's going to change to a positive 1 sixth. So this one we had our pictures. We also need to know how to find slope without a picture. So in this we're going to do the exact same thing, but we don't have a picture. So if I have J and K, we'll just label J our first point and K our second point. I normally just go in the order that they're listed. Um, so if we plug that in, just like we did before, we're going to say the Y of our second point minus the Y of our first over the X of our second minus the X of our first. So that's what we got to be right here. Now if we simplify, negative 1 minus 1 gets bigger negative, so we get a negative 2. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Negative divided by negative gives us a positive 2. So now let's talk about classifying our slopes. I always talk about um, a friend of ours, his name is Fred, and he can only walk from left to right. So Fred has to start on the left side of your graph and walk to the right. So if Fred's walking from left to right on a slope that looks, or a line that looks like this, he's going up. So that's a positive slope. This line has a negative slope. If Fred walks across this line, he's not sloping at all, so we give that a zero slope. And if Fred comes to a line like this, he falls and he dies. So he becomes undefined. Another way to represent, uh, or another thing we use slope for is what we call rate of change. So if Y represents miles traveled and X represents time in hours, the slope gives the rate of change in miles per hour. So um, rate of change is normally just slope applied to a real situation. So we're going to do one or two of those problems and then we'll be done. So it says, Justin is driving from home to his college dormitory. At 4 p.m., he is 260 miles from home. At 7 p.m., he is 455 miles from home. Graph the line that represents Justin's distance from home at a given time. Find and interpret the slope of the line. So if we made a graph that represented time, change in time and his change in miles, we can say that at 4 o'clock, he um, is 260 miles from home. At 7 o'clock, he was 455 miles. So notice by doing so, we kind of made points. So at 4 o'clock, that's our x. This is how far he was. At 7 o'clock, that's our x. And so our y would be um, his distance. So if we use those points, we created a point at 4, 260, and 7, 455. So now we're going to find the slope between those two points by plugging into our formula. So we're going to say our change in y, so this y minus this y, over our change in x, 7 minus 4. So when we plug that in, and we simplify, so 455 minus 260 give us 195. 7 minus 4 gives us 3. If we divide that in our calculator, we get 65. So what we're saying is that the slope is 65 degrees, or no, not degrees, but just 65, which means Justin is traveling at an average of 65 miles per hour. So if he's traveling at 65 miles per hour you'd, at a steady pace, this would graph where he would be um, at each point in his travels. So we could say where he'd be at 8 miles or at 8 o'clock. We could go back and see where he was at 2 o'clock. We can continue on until he gets there. Okay, now we're going to learn about uh, relationships in our lines. Parallel lines theorem says in a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slopes. Any two vertical lines are also parallel. So same slopes gives us parallel lines. In a coordinate plane, two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if and only if the product of their slopes is negative 1. And vertical and horizontal lines are perpendicular. So we'll talk about what this negative 1 thing means. Um, so parallel lines, same slopes. Perpendicular lines, if a slope of any number, a over b, its perpendicular line, we're going to take the reciprocal 
So we're talking about what gives us the um, product of negative 1. If I flip this fraction over, I'd have b over a. And if I want the product to be negative, if that's positive, this has to be negative. These would be our two slopes. So the ratios a over b and negative b over a, those are called opposite reciprocals. Because we took this number, to take a reciprocal, we flip the fraction over. And if this is positive, this is negative. So I make this one negative. So what we're saying is that perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Uh, when we're given four points, we just want to make sure uh, to graph them to make sure they're not all on the same line, to make sure we have two different lines. So let's do one example of this. It says to graph each pair of lines, use their slope to determine whether they are parallel, per perpendicular, or neither. So when we graph, we can normally tell if we think they're going to look parallel or perpendicular. So if we have line uv and xy, if we graph it, they look something like this. Here's uv and here's x or xy. So if we find the slopes of those two things, notice when you put it in a picture, sometimes you can um, count their slopes. You can also put it into a formula. So this looks from v to u, I go up 3 over 1. I could also plug it into my formula and get 3 over 1 or 3. Now when I look at the slope of xy, I could count and see that I go down 2 over 6, which gives me a negative 1 third. Now notice these two slopes. 3 is like 3 over 1. If I multiply 3 times negative 1 third, 3 times a third would give me 1, and a positive times a negative will give me a negative 1. So the product of those two numbers is negative 1, or you could say that these two slopes are opposite reciprocals. So those two lines are perpendicular. Uh, one more example here. Uh, if we graphed the lines for this, these points, they'd look like this. So I notice that the, I know they're not par parallel because I see that they cross. So we, if we want to decide if they're perpendicular or not, we have to find their slopes because we can't necessarily tell from a picture, especially if we're drawing the picture because we're not very accurate. So for GH, if I count it up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 over 4, or I could plug into the formula like we did earlier, I'd get a slope of 1. So I want a negative 1 down here, but ij goes down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, over 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 8 over 4 gives me a negative 2. So if I multiply 1 and negative 2, I get negative 2, not negative 1. So they're not the same, so they're not parallel, but they don't, they're not opposite reciprocals, so the lines are not perpendicular. So we would call those neither. We'd say they're neither parallel nor perpendicular. Here's one quick one just so you can see. Once I graph these, I think they look parallel, but just to check, we could find their slopes. I could just count up 2 over 1, or I could plug into the formula and get 2. Now CD, I can do the same. Well, I did CD first. I could go up 4 over 2. And I could also get 2. So notice by finding the slopes, we see that they're the same, so we call them parallel. So we'll get some practice of this when we're in class. Make sure we know how to use the formula. I would maybe write that down at the top of my worksheets when I'm working on slope, so that I remember what that formula is. It's also up on the wall in pink, um, and I'll see you guys later.